Hello and welcome to the Heat Check Podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Heat Podcast. I'm David Wilson and I'm joined as always on the other line by Anthony Chang, our beat writer here at the Herald. Anthony, what's going on? It's been, it's been a little while. It's been a minute. How are you, David? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, yeah, Barry Jackson obviously uh, filled in for me a, a couple yeah. times uh, over the last few weeks. Um, I gotta say, uh, the is not like the, the Heat were in a much better spot. I think the last time we talked, it has been a... a I think it was the kind of skid was starting last time we talked. Right. I think our last episode was right after the Rogier trade. Um, obviously, we got some some stuff to talk about with him there, but um, I guess we should also say we are recording this on uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Heat have games the next two nights, and then we go into the All Star break. So, um, obviously, if they they at Milwaukee at Philly, those would be some pretty impressive wins, even though Joel Embiid is obviously hurt. Um, so we don't want to sound too crazy, I guess, if, if you're listening to this, uh, way later, but, um, big picture, I feel, we, we feel pretty comfortable where the heat stand at the all-star break. And that's kind of the, the stuff we really wanted to talk about more this week. Um, and what the last, um, I guess 20 ish games hours, will uh, be like, uh, will, yeah. will be for this team. So, uh, but I guess first, uh, some injury news. Um, you want to just kind of run through it. We got updates on uh, Josh Richardson and Terry Rozier that not worst case scenario, as you put it before, but leaves the Heat in a little bit of a bind right now. Yeah, I mean, they're really thin at guard right now. Yeah. Um, but I think, relatively speaking, it was good news on Monday, considering how the injuries both looked on Sunday against the Celtics. Um, Jay Rich isn't a huge surprise. Dislocated shoulder, that's what it looked like when he got mm-hmm. hurt there, trying to steal the ball from Jason Tatum. Dislocated right shoulder, shooting shoulder. Um, they say he'll be reevaluated in a couple weeks. I would think there's at least a month. And then from there, you don't even know. I mean, like Dwayne Wade, for instance, I think it was, I don't know, 2008, 2007, it was like after the 06 year, he dislocated his shoulder. I think he missed like six weeks, came back, and then had off-season surgery once season was over. So it's like one of those injuries that maybe he'll be able to play through it in a month when he returns. But the question is, does it pop out again? Does he need surgery at some point? So that's going to be something to monitor they will probably be without him for at least a month, I would think. That'd be my expectation. Terry Rozier, much better than initially anticipated. Um, when he went out, went he went up for a layup, kind of landed a little awkwardly on his right leg, um, immediately collapsed to the ground, holding his right leg. Like Kevin Love was right next to him, like p- pounding the stanchion. Like it looked like it was a season-ending injury. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Need to be helped to the locker room. MRI revealed sprained knee. He avoided like a season-ending thing, no structural damage. So that's all positive. Um, there's some optimism. He may be able to come back like a week or two after the All Star break. Yeah, so it's, it's good timing, I guess, with yeah. the All Star break coming up and like a full week off now for the All Star break too. It's not just the like four day window it used to be, right. but yeah, yeah, that that helps, right? You have you basically have like nine or ten days of no games, so that'll help him, you know, miss fewer games than probably you know than he would have otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he'll be back probably. I would think, you know, again, I would. Just on, on a conservative estimate, I would say probably a month. The spring knee usually like is about a month. But even then, you still have him by mid-March. Yeah. And he's there for the stretch run. So not ideal. Obviously, you want those guys healthy. But considering what it could have been, um, probably um, best case scenario, all things considered. Uh, as you mentioned, though, that leaves them very, very thin yes. at guard. Um, obviously... Hard to imagine they're going to be able to do anything in time for these two games uh, against Milwaukee and Philly. But another benefit, I guess, of that long break during uh, the All-Star break, obviously the trade deadline is passed, but um, they have some, whether it's a buyout guy that comes up or, um, you know, some G League guy, they have, uh, after these two games, um, that can be kind of the main focus, I guess, for the front office uh, during the all-star break is figure out how to fill that spot. Um, what, what do you see them doing there? Are there buyout guys who are, uh, you kind of have your eye on, or, I mean, uh, we, I don't want to be like, you have a G league guy that you're really like, cause I know <laughs> you don't, but um, wh- which way do you maybe see them going? Yeah. Like a bet or, or do they trust the, the heat culture process and get grab some guy we've never heard of from Santa Clara <laughs> tech who, uh, <laughs> Turns into uh, the next $50 yeah. million dollar man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, if these were ser- season-ending injuries or one of them was a season-ending injury, I would think they would go for a vet to kind of yep. fill that spot. But because it seems like those guys are going to come back within the next month or mm-hmm. so, 
I could see them going like a 10 day contract route just to kind of fill the gaps yeah. till until those guys return. And then maybe when those guys return, what this team really needs is more size, right? Or like another wing or another four that maybe is out there. I don't know. You know, there's not great options out there. I know Gallinari has been one that he'd have been linked to. Mm-hmm. And there's been past interest from the Heat and Gallo. Um, but maybe you do the 10 day contract route to keep that option open. So when those guys do return, you still have that open spot. You can then sign a four or, or someone else you really like. So if they do the, do the 10 day contract route, I would imagine they go G, the G League route, which there I actually do have a G League guy. Oh, you do? Okay. That I like. He's it. a familiar. He's a familiar name, Jamari Bouye. Oh, okay. Um, I know they've they they yeah, still like makes, him. That make a lot of sense. Yeah, they still like him. He's still playing for their G League team. And he's like um, on a bill, yeah, like he's with their team, so it's not like he's with their team. Yeah. No one owns so his I, rights right now. No, so they could sign him to a 10 day if he agrees to it. Um, he. You know, again, I don't know if he'll play immediate minutes, but he provides depth. He's a guy who's athletic. Um, he's improved as a point guard. He's a, you know, an, a, a good defender, like decent defender. Um, so I, I, he's a guy that I would keep an eye on. Mm. Um, they also just signed Alondis Williams to a two-way. They released RJ Hampton, signed Alondis Williams, who has been putting up huge numbers in the G League. I think he's in the G League All-Star game. And even in the Rising Stars game, because the Rising Stars game is weird where they have a G League team this year. So... Lonis Williams will be part of All Star Weekend. He scored like 50 points in one of these G League games this season. Um, so he's another guy that he's meeting the team in Milwaukee for Tuesday's game. He's going to be there to provide some depth right now. But he might get some run while these guys are out. Um, so yeah, I think for the meantime, All Star break helps. It'll give him some time to kind of reevaluate things. But I would expect probably more likely a 10 day contract type of deal. Um, just to kind of buy time until yeah. at least one of those guys returns. Right, like you said, it's possible that Terry Rozier could be back within a week or two after the yeah. All Star break, and a ten day contract essentially gets you there potentially. And um, yeah, you don't have to worry about the uh, long term ramifications. Just missed out on Kyle Lowry. I know. I, well, the, <laughs> he would need to be traded first before the Heat are eligible to sign him. Oh, okay. I figured there was something weird there because I know you can't, right, yeah. because they don't want to have that where you get traded, get bought out, and come straight back to the team. I actually think now, maybe he wasn't traded, but I think now since he went to another team in between, now with Philly, mm-hmm. he probably would be eligible to sign with the if Heat. If Philly cut him. If Philly released him all of a sudden yeah. for no reason. I don't know they won't. But then he would be eligible, and then they would basically have gotten Terry Rozier for just a first-round pick, which is a huge steal. Um, <laughs> but that's not going to happen. <laughs> Uh, I guess we should say some other buyout guys that have yeah. not been signed. Killian Hayes. Yeah. Um, Corey Joseph. Corey Joseph was kind of the one that I was like, oh, that kind of makes, feels like a heat yeah. kind of guy to me. Um, obviously not uh, not relevant to this current situation, but Victor Oladipo also uh, just bought out by the Grizzlies. He still has not played yeah. this year, so. Um, yeah, I wouldn't expect wouldn't, that. He wouldn't just, help you this year, but. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, I mean, Seth Curry is another name that's been, Mentioned as a bio candidate. But I like Seth Curry. He's but it's still, not kind of what you for want. Charlotte. And it's not like yeah. what you, like, we're talking, they need, like, a, a ball handler, kind of. Like, right. not, not that the heater, you know, they obviously don't use point guards in the most traditional sense. But, uh, yeah. you know, oh. they're, they're down Kyle Lowry and then down Terry Rozier. Like, those are, and, and even Josh Richardson, to an extent, is he's kind of like, he's not like a, a catch-and-shoot guy. He's a, a guy with the ball in his hands. Yeah, the the one guy I would like, even if there weren't injuries and they were healthy, the one guard I would look at is Delon Wright. But he hasn't been bought out yet. There's no yeah. indication that he'll be bought out. I mean, he's he he was mentioned as a buyout candidate at the mm-hmm. trade deadline. So I think he's on an expiring and yeah, Wizards aren't yeah. going anywhere. No, I'm not sure why um, the Wizards didn't trade either of their point guards, but that's a, yeah. that's a different podcast. <laughs> but I, but he like if he became available, I, I would sign him prior to the rest of the season. Like he could help. You know, yeah. he's a guy that is a good defender. Um, a vet, like it just makes sense. So, but yeah, other than that, like the guys who are available, even Seth Curry is not available. He played for the Hornets last night, so I don't. He, he might just want to stay in Charlotte. That's where he's from. His dad is a yeah. podcaster there. Like maybe just, just so they're, the tra- they're there. trying to recruit Steph. Yeah, there you go. So it's like the dad, <laughs> his dad is there, his brother's there. Like why doesn't Steph make his way over there? Um, so right now the options are available, just nothing super appealing. So that's why I keep going back to the ten day contract route. Jamari Bouye, someone like that who makes sense. All right, uh, let's slide over to where the Heat stands at the All-Star break. Again, acknowledging that uh, two games, uh, two notable games are going to happen between now and then uh, for the Heat. Right now, the Heat sitting in eighth place. 
a, only a game out of the – we need, like, a name for the not playing. It's better <laughs> than, like, only a game out from being not in the play-in. The like, play-in tournament, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> as, I, as I said, Heat, uh, eighth place. Um, has been a rough couple of weeks. Um, obviously, these injury, the injury situation is not helping it. But I, all of a sudden, it feels very similar to last year. Like I'm looking, like their point differential, I think is like <laughs> negative point four. I feel like that was what it was like all of last year. Uh, yeah. It feels familiar, um, but at the same time, uh, I think there are reasons to think that this team should be able to get out of the, the play-in zone where they obviously ended up last year. Um, especially with uh, Joel Embiid's injury, uh, all of a sudden, like, the, the top four feels like it's going to maybe separate itself if, if this next thing just stays. And then five through ten is no one's super impressive right now. Um, what, what do you make of where the Heat stand right now? Um, and what, what are, like, the kind of the reasonable expectations for what the last – it'll be 27 games left after the All-Star break. Yeah. I could hold for Miami. Look, it's it's tough because as we record right now, they have six straight road games coming up, starting mm-hmm. with the Milwaukee game on Tuesday. Um, I think five of the six are against winning teams. Yeah, this is the kind of the um, brutal stretch, and then after that, yeah. it, it, it 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 softens it a little up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the Heat are ten and seventeen this season against winning teams. They have not been good against winning teams. They're obviously yep. shorthanded. These two. Without the two guards, Jimmy Butler's going to miss this two-game trip because of personal reasons, with the, you know, following the death of in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're really, really shorthanded. Then you come back from the trip, I mean, you come back from the break, and you have New Orleans, you have Sacramento, you have a, obviously a weaker opponent in Portland, and then Denver to close that trip, which is Denver to, to end a trip is usually just a scheduled loss every time. Yeah, um, He'd never win that game. So right now, like you said, they're in eighth place. They're what three games over. If they go two and four during the stretch, which is probably, I don't want to say best case scenario, but that's like not terrible. Like if you go two and four, just with all things considered, their opponents, like all the guys you're missing, um, you're you're one game over at the sixty game mark. I think like you're. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be it's very possible they're under five hundred at the sixty game mark. Like that's not if they. Yeah, and, 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 and five in this run, right? Yeah, yeah. If they, if they go one and five, yeah, they are they are one game under. Yeah. yeah, um, that is. I mean, it's gonna to me because of this upcoming stretch, because of the injuries now that you're probably gonna miss Terry and Josh for about a month, um, and where they and kind of the hole they've dug for themselves the first fifty plus games. I think it's gonna be hard for them to avoid the play. It's possible they could yeah. avoid it, but. I mean, it's going to be one of those things where it's going to come down. It's like last year, come down to the final few weeks. They're going to be fighting for their lives to avoid the play-in. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I really do think it's it's going to be something that comes down to the final yeah. few weeks of the season. Yeah, I mean, it it's feels like it's going to be basically year. between them and Orlando to me. Like I'm looking, I'm looking on uh, our good friends at Tankathon.com. I love their yeah. strength of schedule thing. Uh, the nice thing easy is schedule. The yeah. fifth yeah. easiest strength of schedule left, yeah. and two, of, you know, they do the little like. Hardest opponent, remaining opponents. Two of them are the the Bucks and Sixers. So it's going to be by the time we get to the All Star break, their schedule is going to be probably even yeah. uh, lower on this list. And, you, and after the six game trip, it's yeah. probably going to be like they still play Detroit easiest. three times, yeah. Washington twice, uh, Portland twice. Uh, so they have the fifth easiest schedule, which is nice. Uh, problem: Orlando has the easiest schedule left. So yeah. Um, that's why it feels like it's going to be between those two, unless we'll see what Philly without Joel Embiid, like they're the wild well, card, right? Indiana too. Indiana and Indiana right, there, right now is, yeah. is tied with yeah. Orlando, um, behind them on percentage points right now. But right. yeah, so they're, they're right up in that mix too. Um, and don't forget the bulls, the bulls. I mean, they're two and a half back of the heat. Yeah, they're hanging around. around there. So I, um, it, I, I really think it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a fight for yeah. the heat. They're going to be in that conversation again. You know, I, hopefully for them, they get the six and, they avoid a first round matchup with Boston, right? Uh, you know that would be fun in the first round. All the pressure would be on Boston, like that would be fun. But you know, if you're the Heat, you don't want to face the Celtics in the first round of the playoffs. So, unfortunately, entering the break, it just seems like last season. I, I know. Mean, they have a, and it, like, ninth... it was so different. It's crazy because it felt so different for yeah. like first two, two months. months. Yeah. yeah, and then the last month, it was just like it was it's yeah. exactly what happened last year. 
the the yeah. winning, as you mentioned, the 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 big, the most alarming thing is still that record against teams with winning records. That's uh, it's not good. That remains a, a pretty major concern. Yeah, I think last but when year you have a soft schedule left. It, that's uh, you know, it helps them, thing yeah. to be bad at. Yeah, yeah. It, I think last year they were around five hundred against winning teams. So you, no, you can't even point to like, oh well, that that happened last season too. They were fine. Yeah. Like, they were better against. They weren't great against teams over five hundred. Yeah, they, but like, they were like, better. They would beat Boston or whatever. Like, yeah. It felt like once a week. That was the thing about the Heat last year. Was like once a week they would like win a game like that, and you'd be like, oh okay, like right. come playoff time when they actually care. Uh, this year, there have not been those signs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just uh, ninth best defense. I think twenty third best offense right now. Again, kind of the same profile as yeah. last season. I guess the only difference is they're not um, playing in as many close games this year, which is, I guess, good and bad. Um, they've been blo- both, you know, more blowouts in both directions. Um, but yeah, it's just. I, to me, I, I know fans will lean on it. People will say, well, it's the Heat. Like, they figure it out. Jimmy Butler, once he cares in the playoffs, like, it's going to be a different team. Nobody wants to face the Heat. And yeah, that might be true. You know, I, if I'm the Celtics or Cleveland or Milwaukee, I, I wouldn't want to face the Heat in the first yeah. round. But I, I don't know of, like, I have yet to hear a coherent basketball, like, explanation for, like, why the Heat should be considered a true contender this you season. Know. Like, other than, like, well, it's just the Heat. Like, they just figure it out. Like, Eric Spolstra, Jimmy Butler. So that is my concern. And not saying they can't do it, right? They, again, they've proven it in the past. But if I'm, like, giving a list of teams I have the most confidence in right now in the East, like, the Heat are, low on the list, yeah. Fifth, maybe? Sixth? Like, yeah. just because of, like, their play this year. Um, so... Yeah, that's kind of where I see things at the, at the moment. Yeah, and that, it's a bummer that they're going to be so shorthanded for these because we're still like the, they're still looking for a couple impressive wins against some good teams, and you know you can count those on one hand right now. Um, yeah, and you know they would have pretty much five shots at his shots at another one as as you laid out uh, over the next uh, six games and. You know, I, I guess Jimmy will be back after the All Star break, so yeah, probably. Yeah, it'll be you know they'll they'll, they'll get a had to get a chance to like really try to win some of those, um, get a, get a win or two that's impressive after. But right now, it's like even if they beat Milwaukee or Philly, it's gonna be weird, right? Like it's it's not gonna be uh, because the core of the Heat dominate a game. It's gonna be because something weird happens, like Duncan Robinson hits like nine three pointers and something like that. Or Nikola Jovic goes for twenty and twenty, yeah. first twenty and twenty game. I, I yeah, I just it, it'd be funny though, right? Like this podcast comes out tomorrow. They they beat the Bucks by twenty seven points, and all of a sudden the conversation changes. <laughs> even though like even if they win, like it's one game, stuff happens in the NBA. But I think our points still stand. Um, but yeah, I just it it's like it, I think this Heat team is better than last season on paper, and I think yeah. they are better than last season. It's just they haven't been healthy. Like they just. And I know that has for every team, and you know that's not an excuse and all that, but that's the reality for this team. They've used how many starting lineups? Twenty. They've used twenty-eight starting lineups in the first fifty-three games. I think they used twenty-six starting lineups last season and all of last mm-hmm. season. Just been a weird year. And then even this stretch that we're talking about right now, like maybe they would go one and one, or maybe they'd win both of these games if they were fully healthy or close to fully healthy. But it's just going to be tough. It's an uphill battle when you're constantly missing. And for most of the year, they've been missing two or three rotation guys. It's just tough to win or find any consistency when that's the case. Yeah, I think the basketball reason why this team is um, a contender is it's speculative because it's part speculative and part like, like, I I agree with you. I think this roster is better than it was last year, especially after adding Terry Rozier. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, they're just more talented. They upgraded, um, you know, they obviously upgraded the point guard position. Um, if Jaime Hawkes, yeah, they have Jaime Hawkes. Um, Bam is better. You know, Tyler is is better and healthier. Uh, so you've got like everything on the edges. Like, suggest this team should be better. And then the question is, it's going to be Jimmy Butler, right? Because if it the basketball reason is that the roster is better, and if Jimmy Butler of the twenty twenty four playoffs is still the same Jimmy Butler from the twenty twenty three playoffs, then there you go. Like you you. Every bit as good as last year, even if maybe the competition at the top of the East is a little better. Um, 
but we don't, I mean, we, we just don't know. I mean, Jimmy has not been as good this, like even in the regular season has not been as good this year as he was last year where he was pretty ridiculous. He was an all NBA guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, he was, I, it was maybe his best regular season of his career, like yeah. excluding the games played. Yeah, for sure. And, and I guess one of the most encouraging things that's happened, things that's happened recently is that Jimmy, like for the last week or two before yeah. he started, you know, he went out here for personal reasons. It was his best stretch of the season. Yeah. He looked like the Jimmy Butler of last season. He's shooting like 60 plus per step in the field. All of a sudden, he's a 45% three point shooter, or like two or three attempts a game. Um, he was defending at a higher level. Like he was more active on that end. Like he looked like himself again, which is encouraging and shows that he can still do it. Yeah. The question is, like, I have no doubt that Jimmy's going to elevate his play in the playoffs. That's not a question in my mind. But can he? Elevate it that to that level. Again. Yeah, like he was, that, like, like can he get say, that? He was Michael Jordan for yeah. about a month last year. Right, that's the like that's what kind of that's what they needed last year. They needed him to turn into Michael Jordan to and win now, those games. They might not need him like it. that this year because, as we yeah. mentioned, I think like, um, you know, Jaime Hawkins could win you a game, right? Sure. Uh, Bam could, you know, I don't, I don't know if he can win you a game offensively, but he's better. Uh, Terry Rozier is a guy who could win you a random playoff game. Um, Tyler Hero's hell. I mean, if Tyler Hero's available, like yeah. they didn't have him last playoff run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like you said, we we just don't know what extent Jimmy can get, what level he can elevate to. Get to. Yeah. Um, this playoffs, and again, I, I think the top of the East is better. The Celtics are better. The Bucks. Yeah. Um, I know they're not having the regular season, but with Damian Lillard, I, they're I think they're a scarier playoff team. Um, the Sixers were looking. I mean. The Joel Embiid thing obviously throws a wrench in that, but I think they were looking better, and then obviously, then yeah, Cleveland, yeah, and Cleveland are, are both better yeah. than they were last year too. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, we got to wait and see because yeah, um, as uh, it's the story of the season in a lot of ways is like I, we're sixty games in, almost fifty games in, I guess right now, um, and still waiting to see what this this team can be. We've been waiting all year. Just feels like a lot of continuation of last season. It really yeah. does. And um, I think, I guess we just gave like the bas- basketball explanation of like how they could do yeah, it that's again. A, yeah. But again, it's like you said, we don't know for sure. Sh- like we don't know. If Jimmy, <laughs> and we that's a lot to ask for. And we yeah. haven't seen it this year because as we said, la- as I said last year, once every other week, it was like they beat Boston up in Boston. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay. And they like put it all together. That they just clearly yeah. don't care. And, and this year. Uh, we just haven't seen that. The, the re- that's the, why the record against the winning teams is kind of concerning. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That I, I, To me, like, other than injury and stuff, like, one of the most concerning things, aside from the offensive numbers, is record against winning teams. Yeah, that's, that's usually a pretty yeah. good indicator. Yeah. And, like, they have – I mean, even, like, you go through those wins. We have to do that right now. You know, we have to wrap up. But, like, one of them is against Philly without Embiid. Right. Two of them are against the Lakers, which are, like, every other week they're a losing team because they, they're, like, right around 500. <laughs> yeah. So – it's like even those wins, you know, they're they're. I think maybe their best win might be like Sacramento or something like that. Or, um, yeah, they're, they're just there's not really a great great quality win on their on their yeah. resume this season, which is weird this deep into the, you know to the season. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got to wrap things up there. Uh, you can follow Anthony on Twitter at Anthony underscore Chang. Uh, you are headed out to Indianapolis. Are you going to play basketball in the airport? I might, I'm going to look at it for sure. I mean, that's that's, that's going to be awesome. interesting. That's pretty cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a, I'm, I'm, I want to see how they laid it out. Like, I mean, that's a lot of space they had to use at the know, airport. Seriously. During a busy time, probably, for that airport with the All-Star game going I've over there. I've never been to so, Indianapolis, but I've heard it's a very well-designed city. It's a, it's a really good convention city. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, like, it's all connected through tunnels all and connected. stuff. All yeah. connected, yeah. Yeah, like, downtown is pretty compact and like you could walk to everything so in that respect i like i like indianapolis i have no yeah. complaints why what, what are you and, most looking forward to uh from also weekend um i think seeing jaime compete on like that stage of the dunk contest i think it'll be kind of cool like to see a heat rookie do that um and i don't i think people don't really like they're not i think it's like it's the worst odds to win it which you know i mean it's only four guys so whatever but if you watch that video from high school when he did that dunk contest against KJ Martin and Drake London, who's now a really good receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, and Jaime won that contest, like I think he has a shot. Like he 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 can get up. So I'm 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 excited to see him compete in that on Saturday night. It's a bummer that um 
I guess Jimmy's not going to be there because he felt yeah. like it would have been a uh, uh, a good like character to involve in Jaime Hawkins' <laughs> slam dunk contest. I uh, guess Bam. Need... They'll, they'll work Bam in somehow. I'm Bam sure. in there. Yeah. I just want I want Dwayne to be a, Dwayne Wade to be a, a judge again, just like for Derek Jones. Oh, yeah. So the Heat the Heat <laughs> can have a plan there and make sure he yeah. wins. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Derek yeah. Jones. I, I I don't remember who he beat in that one, but I remember thinking it was uh, Aaron Gordon. I think. Yeah, it wasn't one of the, but it wasn't yeah. the great Aaron Gordon one. The one that Aaron Gordon should have won, he lost to Zach Levine with the uh, where the yes. mascot was spinning on the uh, hoverboard. But Aaron Gordon, that was very controversial. I think it was. Everyone, a lot of people thought Aaron Gordon should have won that one too. But yeah, I remember I being was... fine with the Derek Jones one. But I think we also like we both picked Derek Jones to win. Obviously, yeah. and we're, we're a little biased. But uh, Derek, a very fun dunk contest participant. We should just get him get him back involved in it. I mean, Derek Jones to me, like he was one of the best dunkers I've ever seen. Yeah, in person, like he's yeah, he has like a legendary like pickup, not pickup, but like one of those like pro ams like dunk contest right. performances too. Um, yeah, uh, I'm very interested to see how many hotkeys because I, I did he do the McDonald's All American game when he was. I'm in not high sure when I when I YouTube is st- like search on YouTube for his dunk contest. I don't even know if he was McDonald's All American. He might, he might not have been actually, but he it, the thing that comes up is the high school one, uh, going against KJ Martin and Drake London, and he won okay. he won it, and it was some impressive ones like a three sixty. He did like he he had some really really good dunks, and uh, he's talked about him. You know, there's one dunk that people aren't going to expect that's kind of really creative. So I'm just really interested to see you know what he pulls out of his bag. And again, as a rookie to be on that stage, I think it'd be it will be cool. I mean, Hawkins was not a McDonald's All-American, but his sister Gabriella was uh, co-MVP of the 2022 girls game. So, so um, he's not the best basketball player in his, in yeah, his family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at DVWilson2. Uh, thanks, as always, for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week to, to recap the All-Star game and um, look even further ahead to the second half of the season.